Hey, what's up, everybody? I wanted to address a question I've been seeing and getting quite a bit now since the latest June 2025 updates across the Lightroom ecosystem, and it revolves around batch processing your edits. Now, in particular, people are asking questions because of the new changes to the way AI denoise works. It's now part of the edit stack, and the way that that's changed kind of changes the way you would batch process multiple images to do denoise. But no worries, I'm gonna take care of that, as well as just explain to people three ways you can batch process any of your edits across multiple photos, whether you're in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. Now these are both desktop features, so Lightroom Classic obviously on the desktop and Lightroom on the desktop as well. I'm gonna show you three ways. Two of the ways work the same across Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop. One of the ways is Lightroom Classic specific, and that's the one I'm gonna start with first. So let's dive right in. So I've got, uh, uh, I've got Lightroom Classic open right now, and I've got a series of images that need to be denoised. And if I switch over to Lightroom, it's got the same album with the same photos that also need to be denoised. So just that way you can see the same examples or the same photos at least in both applications. So I'm gonna switch back to Lightroom Classic and show you that one exclusive feature to Lightroom Classic as of this recording. And then we'll talk about the other two ways of the three total. So first and foremost, I've got my first image selected and I would love to apply denoise to the other three that are in that same row, just to keep it simple. Now, I'm selecting three additional ones. It could be 300, it could be 3,000, it could be 30,000, it could be as many as you want uh, to, for this process to work. But I'm keeping it simple, just selecting four images at a time. And also as a reminder in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Classic does this thing where it's it's got all four selected, but the one with the lighter color is the what we call the most selected. So if I were to click on this one, now it's the most selected. If I click on this one, it's the most selected. And if I only want the first one to select, this is a bonus tip, just click anywhere outside of the thumbnail, just like right here on the border. Now only that one image is selected. So just so you know, so I'm holding down my shift key, I'm selecting all four, and if you want to select ones that are not contiguous, meaning not, in, not next to each other, then on Mac, you would hold down your command key, on PC, you would hold down your control key, and that way you can click different ones that aren't necessarily next to each other. And just like in Photoshop, if you wanna deselect all of them, that would be Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. So just same thing, we'll select all four. Now let's get into the main thing where we wanna denoise all four. So denoise has now been added to the regular develop stack. So if I head down to detail, you'll now see that there's a denoise checkbox. Now, if I denoise, if I didn't change this one thing I'm about to tell you, then it would only denoise the first one. But if we head down to the bottom of this panel, I've turned this on and I never turn it off. It's called auto sync. And as you can see, it's an on off kind of thing. So by default, it's just on sync, which means you would then have to come down here and click the sync button for it to apply to the other three but I'm gonna go ahead and turn on auto sync, which means it'll apply whatever edits I do across as many images as I, as I have selected. So just note that I leave auto sync on all the time. I can't think of a reason why I need to turn it off. So now I'll go ahead and click denoise and it will start processing those images. And I may not, I may speed this up so we're not sitting here waiting, but this is also new that we get this progress bar, we get this dialog box, it should be faster but it is now applying that denoise across the board. And once it applies it, it is now syncing to the other images. So one of the other three are being done now. So we'll speed this up. And just like that, all four images have now had denoise applied to them. I can verify it just by clicking on one of them, going back to develop. And in fact, yes, it has the denoise slider or denoise, uh, added to it. Now keep in mind that denoise is now part of the ed edit stack and you can go in, you can turn it off, you can turn it on, the processing's already happened, and I can also control the amount after the fact. This is something new. Whereas before you couldn't do that without generating a whole new DNG. So now there's no extra DNGs created. It has now applied that to all four images 
the one change I just made with the slider only applied to this one, but if I wanted to adjust all four, I could go back to develop, I could then go into there and I can adjust the slider for all four and it will apply it to all four. It should be pretty quick though. All right, so for the people that say, hey, I wanna apply denoise and I wanna have it, have it happen to hundreds of photos and I just wanna leave it for the night and go to sleep and wake up and it's done, that would be one way to do it is to just simply select all the ones you want, apply all your edits in the develop module and then have auto sync turned on and it will apply it across as many images as you have selected. Okay, so that is the number one way. That's the way I do it. And that is the way that it's done in Lightroom Classic with auto sync. And again, if you wanted to manually sync, you could. All right, so now let's go down and let's talk about the number two or second way to do this. The second way to do this, I'll select the next four, is actually, I'll just select the first one. Let's, let's skip that. Let's select, select just the first one. And we'll go in once again, and we'll see that, yep, it's kind of noisy. And I now want to apply denoise to this first photo. So I'll just go into develop and again, just process this one photo and let it denoise that one photo. Okay, it's now denoise that one photo. So if I go in again, I can turn it on, turn it off. I can adjust the amount. I can tune it, fine tune it and get it just the way I want it to look. Great. So now that it's done it to that one photo, I later decide, hey, I really like the results of this one. I've fine tuned it, I've dialed it in, I got it just the way I want. And now I want to apply it to three more, 10 more, 50 more, 100 more, how many ever photos I want. So I could sync, but let's try the second way, which is to go up to edit and choose copy. You're not copying a photo, you're gonna see what's gonna happen when I hit copy. It's gonna bring up a dialog box that lets me copy any or all of the edits that were done to this photo. Now, again, we're only talking denoise, but had I applied a profile, had I made an exposure change, had I made any changes to the whites and blacks, had I applied a crop or anything else, I could have it copy all of those things and apply it to the photos that I pasted to. So I'm gonna say check none, meaning I wanna start from scratch and I only wanna do denoise, but just note that you can copy as many of the edit features as you've used and then you can go ahead and apply them to, uh, apply it to all of the photos that you're gonna paste it to. So now I'm telling it what I wanna copy. Great, copy. That's been done now. And now I can go out and I can select the other three and I can go up and choose, actually let's go into develop. I gotta go into develop first. And now we can go and choose paste. And it will paste that across all of the other three photos. And again, doing the denoise or whatever other edits you've done. It doesn't have to be denoise, but that question has been coming up a lot since we did the June update. But any features that you want to apply to multiple photos could be done with sync and auto sync and copy and paste. So that's two of the ways right off the bat. And again, uh, the copy paste also works in Lightroom. I'm gonna show you that after this is finished. So that way you can see it's a slight difference in the way that the you get the dialog box to pop up. But let's go ahead and go to that next. Okay, great. So now that's been applied to the other three photos or 30 or 300 or 3000, how many ever photos you had selected when you chose paste. Okay, great. Now, and again, just to verify it, just to make sure if I pick the last one, for example, and I go to develop, Yep, develop has the denoise with that 81 amount to it. So great, that's been done and looks really good. All right, so now let's head over to Lightroom Desktop where I can show the same copy and paste workflow. It's slightly different in the way you bring the dialog box up. So I'll pop over to Lightroom Desktop. Same photos here, by the way, I'm just gonna scroll down and let's go to a different uh, scene or different set of photos. So I've got this photo here. Uh, these were taken all in New York on the Brooklyn Bridge. And I've got this photo and I'm now gonna go into uh, detail and I can I can see, yep, it's it's kind of noisy. Let's make sure that DI, yeah, AID noise has not been applied to it. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that. In this case, this image is in the cloud. So it's gotta bring down the image from the cloud first. Now it's applying the denoise. All right, and that's finished now applying denoise to the photo. So great, and again, I get the slider. I can go and continue to adjust it and continue to make it look better. All right, um, actually, I'm gonna crank that up a little bit more. Great, so now I wanna apply this that I just did to the other three photos on that same row. 
So once again, I could copy, and by the way, you have edit copy here as well, but we've made it easier and more uh, exposed by just putting it down here on this uh, control bar. So copy edit settings, but before I do copy edit settings, there's a little gear icon and that brings up a similar dialog box to the one that we saw in Lightroom Classic where we get to choose what features we want to copy to the other photos. So I'm gonna say none, just like I did before, don't do anything. I'll tell you which ones I want. I wanna go into detail, I'll twirl it down, and I only want denoise. Now again, if you wanna copy any of your other edits that you've done, this is what it's for. Any of the changes you've made to the entire photo, you can now copy all of those things and have it done. But I'm just gonna do this one, copy denoise. Okay, so great, it's been copied. And now I go to the other three, and you'll notice that copy edit settings has now changed to paste edit settings. So I can select as many as I want, three, 300, 3,000, how many ever I want, and now just go ahead and click paste edit settings. And it's now doing the exact same thing. It's pasting uh, the settings that we made to the photo, which is the AI denoise, to the other three photos. So this would be the workflow for a Lightroom desktop user as opposed to a Lightroom classic user. This is uh, way number two. And as you can see, way number two is pretty much the same across both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom Desktop. You access it from the copy paste menu under, under edit or in Lightroom Desktop's case, there's an actual dedicated controls for it at the bottom. By the way, if you're done pasting those settings and you now wanna get, uh, I wanna copy new settings, you just click the little X down there at the bottom and now you're back to copying again. So we can go to a different photo, we can go to the gear, or we can just copy what was done to that photo and paste it to more photos. So that was way number two, copy, paste across Lightroom Classic and across Lightroom Desktop. Now we're gonna go to way number three, which is using a preset. You can make your own developed presets or edit presets and apply those to multiple photos. So I'll, I'll pop down here to uh, uh, some folks or some shots from Hawaii. Let's go in and yep, there's some noise in there that we can go ahead and take care of, but let's go ahead and do that as a preset. So first and foremost, I gotta tell it what I wanna do, do to these photos. So I wanna denoise this one and we'll let it denoise after it downloads the original. All right, so now that this photo has been denoised, this is the one that I want to apply the preset from. So I'm gonna go over to my presets and uh, there's a section called yours. And right now I don't have any for noise or denoise or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new preset and we're gonna call this uh, AI denoise. And I'm not gonna put it in a masking group. I'm just gonna say that it's uh, just in the user presets. Uh, just let it sit there by itself. All right, so once again, we're gonna go ahead and select none. Don't do any of those other things. Just do the one thing I want you to do, which is denoise. So it will copy whatever settings you've done to this photo. So if you need to move the slider, move the slider first. And then once it's done, you've now made your own denoise preset that you can apply at any time to your photos. So if I go to my user presets, there it is, AI denoise, and I can now go in and let's say we go back out and uh, we wanna select these other two photos. We can now go to my user presets where I've got that AI denoise and I can click apply. And it's now, do you wish to apply this preset to two photos? And if you don't wanna be bothered with that message again, say, don't show me that again, but yes, apply that preset to two photos. And again, it'll take the time that it takes to do whatever it is in your preset to apply it to multiple photos. So this will save you the time of a copy paste all the time or an auto sync all the time. Once you have denoise set up the way you want or any other edits the way you want, save them as a preset, including adaptive masking can be a, a save to your presets as well. And then you can just apply those presets to anything you want. Uh, I've got presets for sky, I've got presets for people, I've got presets for just about anything I want to edit on a consistent basis, even with adaptive presets, and it will go ahead and apply those changes, settings, or whatever to the photos, non-destructively. So even if it's not perfect for the new set of photos, I can still go back and make adjustments as needed. 
and they're done. So now that I've got two photos or 20 or 2,000 or how many ever you select have now been applied or had the denoise applied to them. And again, we can get out of presets. We can go to uh, any one of these photos and take a look at the uh, detail settings. And we can go and verify, yep, that denoise has been applied to this photo with the, with the default amount from the preset. So that is how a preset works in Lightroom Desktop. Lastly, we'll switch over to Lightroom Classic to kind of do that same kind of workflow of doing it with a preset. Let's see, let's, yeah, let's use one of these, for example. I'll go in, I'll go to the develop module. I'll uh, go ahead and just, again, use denoise because that's the one that keeps coming up. But again, any of the things you've done can be saved as a preset. And then you can go in and apply that preset to multiple photos as needed. So we're using denoise because that's the one that's coming up the most frequently nowadays. But just note that this workflow applies to everything that you would do to the photo that you want to apply to other photos. Okay. So the denoise has been applied. And again, I can adjust the slider first and I can even make different presets for different amounts. So maybe I have a 50, a 75 and a hundred or anything in between. And I have different presets for that. Okay, so now that we got that photo edited the way we want, uh, over in Lightroom Classic, the preset is over here on the left side. We'll twirl it down. I've got lots of presets. We'll go ahead and make a new one, create preset. And it kind of looks just like the um, the auto sync. So first we need to name the preset. So I'm gonna name it uh, AI Denoise. And we'll say AI Denoise 75 because that's the amount. And once again, everything's deselected because I don't want it to change or apply any of these other things. Maybe I've already edited the photo and I just want to do the denoise. Or maybe I do want to add all these other things in. The choice is yours. I can tell it what group to put it in or make a new group but I'll just keep it in my user presets and then we'll go ahead and say create. And just like that, it's pretty quick. It creates the AI denoise. And now if I select other photos, I can just apply that, uh, go into develop and apply that uh, AI denoise preset. And now it's doing it to the two photos that I selected. And there you have it, three ways to apply your edits in a batch way across multiple photos. And again, it could just be a couple, it could be dozens, it could be hundreds, it could be your entire shoot that you like to apply the same maybe base setting to, to all the photos. And if it's something that's labor intensive like AI Denoise, it's also great to be able to do this and walk away and just let it do it in, you know, let it do even in the background while Lightroom's open, it could be doing it in the background while you work on other things in other applications. So it's great to be able to do this and I uh, hope this a answers that question. I've been seeing a lot, especially on Reddit about how would I batch denoise now because the interface has changed and now you see that you can do it three ways. My favorite of the three is probably doing it with a preset because then the presets say that I don't have to do it to the first photo to have it do it to the rest and I can make as many presets as I want for as many different edits as I want to do and apply those presets. Now, the other, just careful on presets. As long as the things you're selecting in those checkboxes that you're making a preset don't override the previous edit, you're good to go. So for example, I can apply two presets, three presets, as long as the three presets don't have the same things in them. So for example, maybe I do a preset for denoise. De maybe I do a preset for dehaze. Maybe I do a preset for exposure. None of those three things contradict the other. So I can apply all three presets, you know, one by one to multiple photos and it will still do those three things. But if one preset has denoise and exposure and the next preset just has exposure, that last preset's gonna override the first one's exposure because it's set to do exposure. So just know that you can, you can apply more than one preset to a photo at a time, as long as they don't cancel each other out. All right, let me know in the comments, by the way, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Also let me know in the comments, which is your favorite of the three to do? And tell me, tell me what you think, tell me why. All right, cheers everyone. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you on the next one.